Hello everyone and welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. Today is September 29th, 2016. The Prime Minister on Monday opened an extraordinary diet session that will go for 60 days. Michael, there's a lot on the agenda. We've only got 60 days to do it. It will end on the last day of November. Well, what we're looking at is a, a, a condensed session, but there are really only a few things that need to get done. What's really important in the session is TPP. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ask the op opposition, they'll say, there's no reason to be addressing this. It's trapped in the United States Congress. They have a presidential election in the United States. Let it go. We don't have to make a decision. But for the ruling party and for Mr. Abe, there's a, a lot invested in going through the motions of passing TPP, showing that Mr. Abe is not a prisoner of the traditional interest groups of Japan, particularly the farmers, and to have that done in it and the the possibly some of the enabling legislation as well mostly it's just getting the treaty through the house of reps right and you and and it only has to go through the house of reps under the japanese constitution treaties and the national budget are treated separately from other legislation in that they don't have to even be considered by the house of counselors though they will be once it's passed the house of reps a treaty or a budget is law. Okay. Uh, they go through the motions and they have other actions that take place, but for all intents and purposes, once that vote happens, TVP is on in Japan. Okay. So the diet deliberations are now in full swing. The upper house meets two days of the week. The lower house meets the other two days of the week. They have a one day off and they're deliberating these, these bills right now. Well, they're doing it in committee and they're going to be, they've only right now had the plenary sessions with First, the policy address by the Prime Minister for the extraordinary session, and then the responses and questions from the opposition. Right. And that has gone basically the way everyone has thought. There is, of course, a new team on in the DP. We have a new leader in Renho, the first uh, woman leader of a major party since uh, Takako Doi right. with the socialists, and a secretary general, and, and a new uh, yeah, and the new secretary general who is the Class A war criminal, at least for many inside the DP, Yoshihiko Noda, who called the election in 2012. Uh, Former prime minister. Right, he was the prime minister. He challenged Mr. Abe saying, I'm going to, if you will p vote for these pieces of legislation and promise to reform the House of Representatives, I will call an election. And Mr. Abe said, sure. And it was a complete disaster for the Democratic Party. They got completely wiped out. They were called the Democratic Party of Japan at that time. The DPJ got mauled. And in fact, uh, the uh, sharp-tongued Makiko Tanaka called it the, uh, the suicide bomber election for her party. When she lost her seat, everybody lost their seats. It was a complete disaster. He's back. Yep. And that, uh, it's understandable because she has been a, um, he has been a mentor to, to Ren Ho and been a major support of her. But for a lot of the members of the DP, they have a lot of bad memories to sure. work out. And it's going to be interesting to see whether his priorities, which are rather limited and maybe not exactly what particularly the uh, socialist side of the DP likes, whether it's going to fly. Right. There are a couple of hot items that they want to discuss and hopefully make some progress on during this extraordinary diet session, including the supplementary budget, uh, some sort of discussion about what we want to do with the abdication of the current emperor, and the, the, the constitutional reform. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to start immediately with discussions within the constitutional committee. That's a committee- That's, that's a top, it's one of the top issues. I mean, it's TPP and the constitutional revision. Yeah, the constitutional revision is something that, again, that doesn't necessarily have to happen right now. It has to happen for image purposes for Mr. Abe, mm -hmm. because he and his party, ever since that party has been founded, the LDP, have been demanding we need to revise the constitution. Well, now, together with allies, they have two-thirds majorities in both houses of the Diet, and are, for the first time in history, mm -hmm in the position where they can amend the constitution. If they don't open the committee meetings, then that shows they're insincere. So it's it's simply in order to fulfill an obligation. Uh, uh, but whether they'll do anything. Party pledge. Yeah, it's a party pledge. Right. 
Whether they'll do anything on that, I doubt sincerely, because we have this very strange business about a possible election in January. Well, who's been saying that for a long time? Yeah, but the thing is about that, it's become a lot more real ever since the LDP moved its party Congress from its usual January date. No, it's in March. It's gonna be March. And the only times that has ever happened before is when there's been an election in December and then they move the party Congress away for a few months. Mm -hmm. Here there's no plan for a December election and everyone's saying, okay, what's gonna happen? Okay, we have TPP. Okay, that's gonna need some kind of national referendum mm -hmm. to, to, to- The supplemental budget, we have the easy supplement pass. The supplemental budget is an easy pass, but it's got a lot of items in it that are sweetheart deals for both LDP and personal Abe supporters. That's right, and so who's your daddy? Who's your daddy is right. going to be a big theme in the, in the discussions of that supplementary budget. Sure, it's going to pass, but the opposition has a lot of juicy things to sink their teeth in to when they want to mm -hmm. in that supplementary budget. I really dislike it, and a lot of people uh, are, find it really just a complete sellout. Right. Um, and there are items in there that are going to become fodder. And he, uh, that should be put to the voters. And then the big kahuna is after the diet session ends, the December 15th summit in Nagato with Putin, mm -hmm. where Abe will be breaking ranks with the rest of the G7 uh, and breaking ranks with a lot of, you know, what the, with the Western alliance and inviting Putin to come to his country for a summit meeting. Right. It won't be in Tokyo. It'll be out in Nagato, in, in, out in, in, in Abe country. But nevertheless, it's going to be, you know, the first time since the Crimean uh, crisis that Putin will be traveling to something that is other than mm -hmm. an international event, a real bilateral summit. And Abe is expected to have some kind of deal worked out. No, for, he seems to be sending the signals and preparing the, the press and the population for that. For a, for a, for a final peace deal, mm -hmm. which most likely, given the positions that, I mean, Dr. Brown talked about this a few weeks ago on the show, what the, the, the Russian position is, is we don't have to deal anything, we don't have to give up any islands, and if we do, it's gonna be the, the two island solution, which gives up only 7% mm -hmm. of the land, right. which is a big, you know, it's a big piece of, piece of crow to, to swallow. If that's indeed the deal, then that has to be put Another to the referendum. Vote. So that, it kind of tees up this perfect storm of, aren't I your guy? Let's have another election and I'm going to take it to victory. And then in March, who's going to be the new prime minister? And who's going to be the prime minister all the way up until the 2020 Olympics? Because in March, when I say, look, I've led you to victory after victory right. after victory. And all this money that's falling out of the sky. And all this money is falling out of the sky. You folks should give me a chance right. to have a third term as party president and they will they will on be on their knees well or maybe they'll be standing up that was a thing in in the in the policy address for the first time ever members of the of Mr Abe's party stood and gave him a standing ovation and indeed that became a problem because even the the uh, policy the uh, diet Affairs Committee chairman said they should never have done that. Mm -hmm. And that's the LEDP side. The right. opposition, of course, went completely bonkers. Now, for that might, you know, for people outside of Japan, that might not be meaningful. But this psychophantic adoration no. for the words of the leader, sure. that's new. One thing that we didn't talk about, uh, because it's not really a, a diet issue, it's more of a policy, uh, a, a party issue, is the extension uh, allowing the prime ministers to sit for three consecutive terms. Yeah, that has ne never been done before. What, what has happened only one time was with Prime Minister Nakasone. At that time, the LDP had two two-year terms as the limit, so you could only serve as head of the party for four years, and if you're the head of the party, you are automatically the party's candidate for the right. prime ministership. If you wanted to continue, and he did, you have to have some kind of arrangement, and they made a, a one-year extension. Mm -hmm. They didn't change the rules. A rule change came later and allowed for three-year terms. So now you get two three-year terms, and Mr. Abe will be running up against mm -hmm. that in the year 2018. And if he leads them to a massive victory, or even a, a minor victory, 
We'll it, call it a massive victory. Well, well it depends. It, it depends on what re kind of rhetoric you want to use in order to get people to, sure. to read your article. Uh -huh. you, you know, we had this same problem with the landslide in, in July, which, the was not a, which was not a landslide. Uh, whatever they call it, whatever he calls it, if they, he leads the party to another victory in, in elections, there is no way that the party can say mm -hmm. no. And he will then be the prime minister most likely for another three sure. years. Right. Well, that's that looks like what everything is teed up for. Get back, getting back to TPP though, it looks like TPP cannot really be fully implemented unless the United States passes it as well. I mean, having the the Japanese pass it in the Diet does not make it an integrated uh, uh, treaty for for trade and investment for all the countries to enjoy. But in this case, we're looking at an administration in the case of Mr. Abe, where trying is just as good as succeeding. Mm -hmm. uh, we, they've been trying to raise the inflation rate, they've been trying to raise the growth rate, and just because they tried, that should be good mm -hmm. enough. The same holds true with the TPP. We tried to get the TPP into place, we even voted it on the treaty, and we're all, we've, we've done all the, the checking of the boxes. Uh, if the United States drops it and, and the thing falls apart, well, we tried. Yeah. And, and, Honestly, the, that's that's sufficient for what Mr. Abe's real goal is, which is to be in office as long as possible. Well, we, we both of us, I'm sure, get uh, peppered with questions from people from the United States on on TPP and Japan. But the Japanese also want to know: in this lame duck session, will President Obama pass TPP? Who knows? But the Japanese look like they will pass TPP in this diet session. Yeah, the, the only a aspect of it that the opposition has to grab onto is the very slow implementation of the dropping of tariffs on light trucks mm -hmm. that the Japanese auto industry basically got sold out. And the Japanese auto industry is very important to Mr. Abe and, and should be you know, should be getting more out of this. But the the arguments and the arrangements have, with the United States led to a halfway okay solution in terms of agriculture and its tariffs in Japan, and uh, absolutely no budging at all until the very end of the period in terms of auto tariffs. Right. Uh, it, it's 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 it, it it's a deal. But it's a it's it's a terrible deal mm -hmm. uh, in terms of of what Japan's auto industry and Japan's manufacturers should be getting out of it. Right. Well, that was the the comment that uh, former Prime Minister Noda was making when he was challenging the Prime Minister. You you know the TPP is not ripe for us. It's not ready to be you know passed into law. Yeah. The thing is, I, I would really be interested in seeing if the DP extends this concept of selling us out, right. selling us out, and takes it you know in the direction perhaps of the uh, summit with Putin, you're going to sell us out, aren't you? Mm -hmm. We have this n national position that the four islands are ours. They are ours under the 1875 treaty between Russia and Japan. There's no question about that. And yet you're going to, for your glory purposes, in order to get it through your agenda, you're going to sell us out. If they can sell that concept of this it being a sellout in administration, they might be able to get some kind of traction, mm -hmm. but it, January is so soon. Right. And, and clearly, this administration and, and the, the LDP is looking at Renho, at the positive numbers that came out of her election, and that a lot of people have a lot, very high expectations of her, and that she's going to pull in a lot of votes that otherwise would not be there if they just picked another guy, for example, Mai Hara. Right. That, that this is going to be a very, very tricky election if they run it. The sooner they get to it, the less time she has to make an impression, the less they, less traction the DP will have. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think it, it could most likely be a flash in the pan. I mean, she's got her own challenges just trying to cobble some sort of a coalition together in her own party, much less take on the LDP. I don't know. I would say that the party is pretty much resigned to what has happened. They're unhappy with the NODA selection, but there are other factions of the party, they're, they're not called factions, they're called groups, but they're factions, uh, that have been served mm -hmm. in being given positions in the, in the secretariat. So balance has been maintained within the party. And they've, the conservatives in the party don't like the close right, approach right. with the communists, but right. more and more, the communists 
are getting on the side not of let's you know let's nationalize everything we need to have uh, we need to tax the the uh, wealthy to to extremes these traditional ideas that you associate with the communist party the communists were arguing very strongly against the part of the supplementary budget that's geared towards helping out the maglev construction mm -hmm. saying this is a violation of market principles sure. Market principles from the Communist Party? <laughs> yes. Mm. And there is something in that. There's right. something happening in terms of we have a, a massive socialization mm -hmm. that's taken place so far with the BOJ's involvement in the stock market, with the, the, the shift of the uh, pension fund, the GPIF, into massively into buying domestic securities of various sorts, mostly in, in, uh, shares. It's a, it, you can make an argument that mm -hmm. under the conservative LDP, we've had a socialism, a dream come true for socialism, that the corporations are now owned by yeah. the government. Yeah. And I think that if they, you know, if they position themselves right, the conservatives within the DPJ will be very happy mm. because they're market conservatives, right. because they're the kind of people that used to get along with Koizumi who came in with his market-based reforms, they're there in the party. And funny enough, the communists are there too. Right. So this controversy, this, this, this tearing apart of the party, I think that's just propaganda that's put out by, let's face it, the Yomiuri Shinbun. Okay. Before we wrap up this episode, Michael, I'd like to talk a little bit about abdication and how that might be handled in this current diet session. There seem to be two major lines of attack. One of them is from within the LDP, especially the, the advisors that are closest to the prime minister. They seem to be saying- Quick and dirty. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a, a for this emperor- For only, this one, right. For this Heisei emperor only little tweak saying he can abdicate, but nobody else can. Right, which is counterintuitive because you would think the LDP would like something a little bit more long-term, something that really grabs the imperial household and the system so that they can, you know, begin to move this process forward. Yeah, that's, that, that, you know, they've been talking that way for a very long time, but talking and actually doing are two different things. On the other hand, there are the sticklers within the uh, LDP, who say, no, if we're going to change the law, it's Let's... a change in the law. Mm -hmm. It's the law. You don't just play around with things. And that's a two, three year but the, process. Not, right? no, I don't think it's going to be very long because it, it's really, there was a great deal of discussion about, oh, this is going to open the Pandora's box of right. having women emperors mm -hmm. and, and whoo, and all <laughs> kinds of people pretended to suddenly you know, be you know, fainting. Oh, I can't believe that they're going to talk about, no, they went through that whole rigmarole. Right. But on the basis of just simply saying abdication is not forbidden, well, then it can be permitted. Mm -hmm. And we, we already have the, the regency, which is, assumes that the current emperor is not competent. This idea that we have to wait for him to become incompetent, right. that's, 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 that's asking for trouble. We can deal with this. Mm -hmm. We can have the process of abdication. We don't have to worry about any kind of, of, of abuse of the system. Mm -hmm. And I think that side's winning, actually. Right. Because for, for the longer term. For the longer term. Because the opposition will absolutely not stand for a workaround solution on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to, to, to eat it in terms of the security legislation, which is just a workaround of the, of the Article 9 of the Constitution, that they would try to do a workaround of a law. It's not the Constitution here. Right. It's the, it's, it's the imperial, imperial household, household law, law right. which is easily amendable mm -hmm. and changeable. The Constitution, hard to change, admittedly and a workaround is necessary. Here, if you're not willing to take on the job of legislating, why are you a legislator? Right. A lot of issues to be discussed in this current diet session. Please stay tuned. We're gonna be reporting on these 60 days for this current diet session. A lot will happen, and then potentially a snap election in the new year. Stay tuned.